Sims. It's your half pass reporter. The guy on the bike. James Calm. And we're out here on the Bowery. I'm gonna run in and try to get some pictures of Susan Rothenberg here at Speroni Westwater. Stay tuned. Well, it says in the press release that this is Susan's 12th show with the gallery. And uh, I think it opened about uh, maybe two weeks ago. I was uh, taking a break. The weather's been kind of lousy and I've had a little bit of a cold. But I wanted to get in and uh, see the show. This piece is titled Pack Rat Fall 2016 to 2019 Oil and Canvas 54 by 47 inches. I think uh, Susan was one of the most uh, hot emerging artists on the uh, downtown scene when I arrived. This is back in the late 70s in Soho. And uh, I think she was one of the people that was designated as a new image painter in a show at the Whitney Museum. 1977-78 entitled New Image that uh, she and some other people were in. Robert Moskowitz, I think Robert Longo might have been in that show. Nicholas Africano. It's titled Pack Rat Drawing. Okay, so they say that this is a show of eight new paintings and six works on paper. And that Susan is responding to her environment out in New Mexico. Some nice paper. Okay, this is the, the animals and birds. So we've seen the pack rats. There are doves, ravens. It's titled Stone Angel. Well, I was just talking to uh, Brett De Palma, and he was at the opening here and said that uh, it was great to hear Susan talking with Mary Heilman about the uh, Soho painting scene back in the mid-70s, late-70s. Okay, so this is oil on canvas, 55 by 36. And uh, yeah, this is cotton duck. It's titled Sack. Well, on canvas, forty by twenty nine and a half. And, uh, well, I guess Mary and Susan were kind of talking about the uh, change of aesthetics at that time. Minimalism had kind of run out of gas. Uh, conceptualism had had its little burst of uh, interest and influence. And, uh, well, there were a lot of younger, young-ish, artists that uh, were not ready to throw in the, they weren't ready to throw in their paintbrushes. And uh, so the whole idea of the new image painters was kind of um, 
starting with the, the empty fields of color of the minimalists and then kind of introducing some kind of figurative elements. This is a big work on paper called Band and Hands 2018, oil paint, charcoal, and graphite on paper. 58 by 71, so that's about uh, five by six feet. So on one hand, oh, somebody was saying I had to look for the hair. <laughs> I was noticing that uh, yeah, it looks like there are dog tracks on here. And someone said, oh yeah, look, you can see that there's also uh, dog hair in some of these. What was happening with the new image painters in New York was probably paralleled in a certain way by what was happening in Europe with the, the trans avant-garde, the three C's, the German Neue Wilden. This is untitled, oil on paper, 30 by 22 and a half. Uh, the Nouveau Figuration painters in France. And also, I think the first, well, I'd read about her work in some of the art magazines. She was painting with Flasha at the time, kind of uh, very matte, dry acrylic paint. Okay, we'll uh, pan around the second gallery space. It's titled Buddha Monk 2018-2019 Oil on Canvas 50 by 51. And uh, yeah, so I think the first painting that I saw of her in uh, the flesh was one of her pieces that was at, in uh, Barbara Rose's painting of the 80s show. That was a, uh, well, controversial, uh, influential show that kind of uh, was a signpost between the, the end of minimalism and uh, that kind of uh, cold, calculated academic art and uh, wasn't exactly a uh, step into the trans avant-garde, but it did bring painting back as a more interesting and expressionistic form It's titled Pianist Playing Schubert. Oil on Canvas 64 by 91. Now, as I said, I started seeing this Susan's work and she was working with this uh, Flasha, which is a very fast drawing, very dry matte surface. I guess it's an acrylic binder. And uh, yeah, within a couple of years, maybe less, um, Susan switched over and decided to start painting in oil. And uh, well, she stuck with Stuck with the oil, I was always a little uh, jealous 
I was studying oil painting and I had these teachers that would say things like, okay, we can see the hair in the, on the canvas here. I would have these teachers that would say it would take you 20 years to learn how to be an oil painter. And, uh, well, Susan could pick it up and people like Peter Sheldahl would be calling her a uh, master oil painter after a couple of months. But uh, I don't know whether I was a, a doofus to believe that it would take that long or Susan just had enough audacity to go out and uh, make the paintings and not worry about the technical side of things. Title study, 2019, graphite on paper, 42 by 30 inches. And, uh, well, this is revealing. I've, uh, maybe I've seen a couple of her horse drawings or maybe works on paper about horses from 40 years ago. But I haven't seen her, uh, Figure drawings, okay. Let me study 2019. And I like the uh, kind of uh, scruffy, grubby uh, feel of the paper. Let's go upstairs. Oh, this is sweet. This is titled Stack of Birds. Oil on canvas, 13 by 13 and 5 eighths by 14 and a quarter. Oil on canvas. And, uh, yeah, Susan does have a uh, a way of uh, patinaing the uh, the canvases and the the papers that she's drawing on. A oh, pretty <laughs> studio grungy. This is untitled. This is from 1990. Oil on paper, 23 by 22 and a quarter inches. Upside down, 2019, graphite on paper, 50 by 42 inches. Okay, so they're calling this graphite, but I guess uh, if you take some turpentine or paint thinner and uh, dip your brush in it and sort of scoot it over the top of your uh, drawing, you can make it look like uh, watercolor wash. I was going to say also, uh, yeah, I don't know whether she intended this, but anytime you're doing your drawings and flipping them upside down, you're kind of uh, paying homage to uh, George Basilitz, who was also one of the uh, Big stars of the trans avant garde. Let's okay, see if we can squeeze this in. It's titled Twisted Tree. Seventy seventy five by sixty inches.
Well, so Susan was one of the hot artists. She was in the Painting of the 80s show, had several shows, I believe, with Speroni back in those days. And at some point, she and her family moved out to New Mexico. And, uh, well, lucky them. I don't know whether they're down around Albuquerque or more up towards Santa Fe. But this is the kind of stuff that you would see if you're out tromping around in the foothills. Twisted old juniper, juniper trees or maybe pinion pine trees. Okay, we're gonna finish our little stroll looking at this piece. Four red birds. Oil on canvas. Sixty by thirty five. Well, I know I've mentioned in a couple of uh, recent reports that uh, I've been reconsidering my ideas about gray and various shades of gray and uh, seeing Thornton Dial with somebody that partially it's the uh, the adhesive base that he used for a lot of his sculptural pieces that was gray but uh, so uh, there's a whole lot of the the German painters that use a lot of gray, and uh, I think Susan is someone that uh, does some nice things with grays. James Com reporting on some new paintings by Susan Rothberg here at Sproni Westwater. Special shout out to our viewers deep in the hinterlands of Saskatchewan, Denmark, and Brazil. We're going to scurry into the James Fuentes Gallery. And we're going to take a uh, walkthrough. of a painting show by Juanita McNeely. This is actually featuring two bodies of work. This multi-panel mural scale piece titled Triskadoka Tiptik <laughs> and an earlier piece this is from 1969 and it's titled is it real yes well I uh, I wasn't familiar with Juanita's work and uh, although I spent a lot of time running around I uh, I can't see everything but I think uh, she's kind of uh, typical of uh, what's happening now with the reevaluation re of contemporary painting. Uh, it says here in the press release that she was born in 1930, 
She was born in St. Louis. I guess I just talked to the gallerist and she said that she was 83 years old. Uh, came to New York City, I think in the early 60s. Looks like she was very much a part of the, what they're calling the second wave feminism. Uh, this was interesting. She was in a group called Fight Censorship, founded in 1973 by Anita Steckel, along with Judith Bernstein, who has been getting a lot of attention lately, Louise Bourgeois, Martha Edelheit, who we've covered, Joan Semmel, Hannah Wilkie, Enos Golden. <laughs> Here is the uh, ironic part. I've done videos of Hannah Wilkie. And um, Martha Edelheit, and they've been, well, not exactly censored, but they have been put up behind age appropriate barriers at YouTube. So that has probably cut down the view rate of those pieces by 80%. Okay, so I don't have a, a list that talks about the uh, titles, dimensions, mediums. I imagine this is all oil paint. And each one of these panels, I would say, well, they're various widths, but they would say that they're probably about uh, six feet high. Okay, so one year was born 1936, moved to New York 1967, amid the rise of second wave feminism and women's liberation movement across the country. Well, I'm just looking at uh, the images and I guess they talk about Juanita was traveling around and had some kind of a, an accident and injured her spine and uh, I guess this particular piece was painted over a period of maybe several months while she was dealing with that. I'm kind of looking at this and uh, thinking a lot of this is a uh, kind of a pastiche of a lot of surrealism and um, I don't know, social protest art. And it says that she was also dealing with the, the issue of abortion, which was still illegal in many places at that time. And I think there's also a, uh, kind of a flavor, an echo of German Expressionism that comes through a lot of this. So yeah, actually, um, well, it is technically a pretty, uh, Pretty interesting painter. She's got a lot of uh, different approaches to her uh, surfaces. And uh, gosh, the other thing is that uh, so it says this, this piece was dated from 1986, so we're talking about. about 40 years ago, and it's, uh, it's held up fairly well. I think also some of the, the figuration might be a little overwrought, but, um, yeah, Juanita does a nice job of, uh, rendering her her forms, uh, contrasting the paint surface. Okay. And 
and uh, well, I would have to say that this is probably something like 60 feet long, 70 feet long. Okay. Let's look at, is this real? And again, this is another multi-panel piece, although rather than having everything lined up horizontally, she's kind of tiled them. Actually, I, uh, I think I like this. A little better the uh, I think the color is more basic. Uh, I'm not going to say subdued, but dealing with more um, straightforward colors, not so many kind of exotic electric. Um, spectral colors. He's gotten into more of the, the black and white and uh, I was always one that thought that uh, if you're going to be dealing with narrative and images and figure things and you wanted to represent them it's better to uh, probably hit them as directly as you can without getting involved in a lot of other issues if you can. Uh, okay. So I like the uh, kind of the burnt sienna Indian red played off against the uh, dirty yellows and grays. Also, uh, I think you'd have to say that Juanita was looking at a lot of Max Beckman, and this goes back to uh, what I was saying about the influence of German Expressionism kind of echoing through here. So I'd say the central canvas here is probably something like a six by six foot square and uh, The other panels are probably all in the category of, I don't know, three by four feet, three and a half by four and a half. Okay, we'll just uh, kind of focus in on some of the individual panels. a walkthrough of pieces by Juanita McNeely at James Fuentes Gallery, 55 Delancey Street, the heart of the Lower East Side. You can like this, subscribe, share, post it at your social media sites. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, and criticisms below. Actually, I've been very impressed with some of the responses we've been getting recently, so keep it up, folks. Critical thinking is a big part of my mission here. Just as long as you remember to say, 
Thank you, Kate. Oh, yes, it will. That was beautiful. Thank you. What's your What's your name? My name is James Smith. James what? Smith. James Smith. Thank you, James. I enjoyed that. Happy holidays, James.